<laughs> just got over cold, man. Okay, we are live. What's up, oh, ladies and gentlemen, live. boys and girls around the world? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> If someone's got to blow your nose, go ahead, blow your nose. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world? I would like to welcome you back to the Real Talk with Zuby podcast. As you've probably seen and use already, and you've already heard, we have got on some legends on the podcast today. I've been following these guys on YouTube for literally over 10 years. TMW, Twin Muscle Workout, the Conservative Twins, a.k.a. the Hodge Twins. Welcome to the show. How are you guys doing? Hey, thanks for having us, man. Yeah, we're doing great, man. We're doing real good. Real good. <laughs> yeah, we just got That's... out of a cold, though, man. I don't know what that was. Maybe it's COVID, too. Oh, hey, man. What's that other dialect is out? Dialect? <laughs> That's a language. You mean, uh, what do you call it? Uh a new strand? Yeah. Oh, var- variant. Variant. Yeah, variant. That's you what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting oh, quiet, man. It's yeah. early, man. Yeah. Just woke up. Yeah, we had a cold, man. This right, is man, the first well, day since we got back from our tour that I'm actually feeling good. You know? Yeah. Awesome, so. man. Ooh, great. Well, I've done a brief intro there, but for, for the few uninitiated people who may be watching or listening, tell them who you are and what you guys do. Well, uh, currently we're like, uh, I would say for like the last three years, we really went deep in, deep balls deep into politics. <laughs> but we started, like you said, like 10 years ago. It first started yeah. with just like a channel where we talked about current events, like yeah. wild stuff you hear in the news. Then we started you know, fitness. Fitness. And then we went into our relationships. Yeah. Relation- we have a relationship channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. People love just to hear what we think about anything. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but, um, um, but our popularity has never been like this high. I think a lot has to do with because of our political views. So. Yeah. And being yeah. black and having those political views too is, yeah. it's kind of, you. well, I, I'm sure you, you, you understand that just being black and being yeah. like as yeah. far as our political views. And I, I know the white people said, man, I thought I was going crazy there for a second. Actually some black men that think like I do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes well, I, I knew, I knew I wasn't going crazy. I want to say this stuff, but I couldn't. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. I mean, yeah. my family background is originally from Nigeria, and I think people forget that there's an entire continent called Africa, which is yeah. full of black conservatives. Uh, people in the UK and USA act like we're, we're unicorns or something, but uh, yeah. it's it's not actually as rare as people think. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, that's you know, that's that's true because you know, mainstream media like paints us as like the outcasts. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more of us. They just don't have the balls to speak up. <laughs> you know these niggas. <laughs> these niggas, man. There's something wrong with these motherfuckers. Ah, oh, there we go. I just got demonetized right there. <laughs> oh, man. All right, no more customers. <laughs> Sorry about that. Man, you, go, you can't even get paid for this. <laughs> so before anyway, we do... You know yo, what the weird thing, Zuby? You know, um, you've been following us for years. A lot of people, mm-hmm. a lot of black people is not really, uh, we haven't resonated well. I mean, ever since I was a small child growing up through school, I never considered myself to be, you know, black. I didn't feel that way. It's just, I don't, I can't explain well, you're it. Black. Both your parents are black. I mean, both my parents are black. What are you but, talking about? Well, I feel, I'm try, what I'm trying to say, I'm transracial, man. I feel like a white man <laughs> trapped in a black man's <laughs> body. <laughs> no, no, seriously, seriously. Um, what I was going to say is, you know, black people, for the longest, they said we're not black. So we wanted to prove to them yeah. that we're not black. So we went and got our DNA tested. Yeah, well, and li- like you, 25% of our DNA is Nigerian. Yeah. Um, like okay. 50, 56% yeah. overall is from Africa. Yeah, but mm. the, the biggest part of Africa is Nigeria. Yeah, I forget. There we the, go. Uh, Tobago. Shut up. Now, keep in mind, Zuby. Keep in mind now. I got DNA results, right? Came mm-hmm. out. They said, oh, you ain't black, you ain't black. As soon as I come out conservative, oh, man, you a damn sellout. <laughs> you just want to be white. <laughs> so I've been telling you niggas for the last 10 years I'm black. Now all of a sudden I'm a sellout. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. As we know, bl- blackness and whiteness are about uh, politics now rather than uh, yeah. any, any type of DNA or genetics, apparently. That's what I've been told. Yeah. 
Yeah, no doubt. You're supposed to think a certain way just because you're black. You're supposed to be dumb and depending on the white right, man. Come on now, you, you're talking down to black folks now. Uh, that's what they they want reparations. They want this. They want that. They can't. They can't. T- they can't bend for themselves. <laughs> you need yeah. white politicians, liberal yeah. politicians to take care of your life, and you don't. People yeah. don't realize mm. the power that they have of their own life. Yeah, I know. Mm. And I, the the main reason to be why we came out as conservatives because we want to show, you know, people of color that no politician can give you the American dream. You have to earn that. No no liberal, no conservative is there to give you the American dream. And if any liberal or conservative is saying it, they're lying to you. Yeah. The only reason why I vote uh, Republican, I voted for Trump, is because I want everybody to stay out my damn life. That's the mm-hmm. only reason why I vote. I don't vote because I want reparations. I don't vote. I'm not voting for you because I think you're going to bring jobs to my community. I just want you to leave me alone, let me do my thing, and just make sure nobody takes my rights away. That's the only no reason why I vote. Yeah, well, 2021, that's that's super controversial, wanting to be left alone. Yeah. I, I want to I wanna find out a little more about your your journey. How did you guys even get into the world of YouTube? What's the story behind that? It was Keith's big idea, really. We was working as um, uh, insurance adjusters at AAA of Southern California. Keith came to my desk because we were studying. I wanted to be an accountant. We wanted to be CPAs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine us working on the <laughs> Man, they for this man, he ain't gonna That's get not a cuss word. <laughs> it's derogatory. By the so, way, it was my idea, so I went to Kim's cube because, hey man, they can start this new platform called YouTube. Yeah. Hey man, I heard you. We can make a couple bucks on there because I was just trying to find money to pay my car note on time, keep yeah. it from getting repossessed. Yeah. And I would say for the first. Two or three years, it really didn't go anywhere for us. I think the most amount of money we made during those two, three years was like maybe $25 a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It wasn't but much. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, it just started slowly growing. And mm-hmm. before we knew it, you know, I, I still can't believe it, actually. Because <laughs> I remember <laughs> our first YouTube video we put up on Christmas Day. What remember year that? was that? Yeah. We put up, our, it was like a, a comedy sketch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and our first comment was, um, what kind of loser with no subscribers uploads uploads a video on Christmas Day? Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> the taster of things to come. Yeah. yeah These man. people, I don't even read comments, man. I remember <laughs> I was reading a comment. This dude hated us so bad he had wrote a comment this long. Just to give you the gist of his comment, he said, I hope y'all get in a car accident. The other one's thrown from the vehicle. He's paralyzed. He can't move. The other one's trapped in a car with a seatbelt wrapped around his neck and the car kept on fire. And you watch him die. That's how much I hate y'all. Oh, man. People are savage on the internet, man. People are yeah, savage man. on the internet. That's crazy as hell, man. That's pure hate right there. A hundred percent, man. So how did you guys start to gain traction? Was there a particular video that that took off or I would say how it did it go? Yeah. Mm. Because we was doing current events, uh, you know, we yeah. talk about wild stuff in the news. But we wasn't really being ourselves yet. Really, fitness, you know, opened us up and we were starting to be more genuine. Because whenever you do um, media, if you don't come off genuine, people think you're fake. People are not mm-hmm. going to. People, we openly, I mean, we generally started to open up when we started doing fitness. It was more us. We could be ourselves. Yeah, because when we first started, we was like, oh, today on today's hard swings. Uh, <laughs> this happened in Minnesota. Right. I mean, we wasn't. We was being what we thought people thought we should be. Yeah. Mm. I think we really took off once we started just being us. Yeah. Because sometimes we'd do a video and I said, man, I mispronounced that word. Just upload it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I know y'all praise her. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> so right. stuff like that, we'll just keep in the video because it's, I mean, it's yeah. just us. And I'm not trying to be perfect anyway. Nobody's yeah. perfect. So. Yeah. No doubt, man. What was it that kept you going through it? Because anyone, you know, any entrepreneur, any creative person building something and staying consistent with it, especially when you're not really seeing results or money, it's hard. It's it's disheartening, especially when you're getting nasty comments, you're putting in work, you're doing stuff. Right. What was it that kept you going throughout that? Well, well we, we always want to be like entrepreneurs, not don't not have a boss. Yeah. I always wanted that power over my life where I didn't have to clock in. And, I, I gotcha. and that's, that's, that was my motivation because I didn't feel like I was ever getting somewhere, you know, working for somebody else. Yeah. Well, I keep just saying that because every job we had together, we lost. So we got fired. So <laughs> it's not like we had a choice. Guess who got us fired? <laughs> <laughs> and you guys were. I keep the job, right. Because yeah. I interview better. I said, hey, I get the job. I'm wicked. Hey, you know what? You like me, right? I got a twin brother just like me. <laughs> 
he needs a job too, man. We'll be there for about six months of the year. Kevin will come in and get us both fired. <laughs> There's got to there's got to be a good story there. Is there is there anything you can you can share on a podcast? Uh, a lot of cussing in it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got fired from Triple Eight because we was doing YouTube videos. Yeah. On okay. Break, yeah. We was in the office, right? At because we didn't have time. We had a job, right? So we were sitting in this office on the second floor. There was no signage or anything. We, during our lunch break, we would just do stupid <clears throat> little YouTube videos to keep it keep it going. Mm. And I guess we were cursing in the videos. HR found out about it. Yeah, they started an investigation. <laughs> but the, 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 the whole reason why they they sat down and talked to us because at that time the, the economy had, took, had tanked. I mean, it was, you know, the economy was doing real bad. So yeah, they, we were overstaffed. As yeah. They, were. yeah. Mm. they used it as a reason to um, fire us. Yeah. Fire us. Yeah. Uh, but it's funny. They had already fired Kevin. <laughs> right. Then he came to talk to me. And I, uh, right there while I'm talking to this HR and this woman, they're recording it. That's like, man, I think these white people about to fire my ass. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I was trying to be professional, you know, and keep it going and talk my way out of this. Then all of a sudden, about 10, 15 minutes into it, Kevin, like, bust up in there. There you are, I found you. Hey, you know what they're talking to you about, right? They already fired my black ass. <laughs> they just fired you too. Yeah, That's I went off on them. Yeah, I gave them white people a piece of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's back in my liberal days. <laughs> I was a stone cold fool back in the day. I cussed out everybody. They called them cops, security. <laughs> but it was oh, about man. those YouTube videos. And, yeah, about uh, some cursing. Yeah, because mm. we cursed in the videos. But keep in mind, on the YouTube video, we're not saying we're employed by AAA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, you don't know where we're at. Yeah. I mean, I got a shirt in town. I'm looking professional, <laughs> but they just used it because they was overstaffed. And me and my brother, man, we was like some of the hardest workers at that company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That job I took as serious. I worked. I busted my ass. I did everything right, and they're gonna fire me for some shit I did on lunch break. <laughs> That's but you know what? Yeah. You know what? Because of what happened, we was allowed to get unemployment. Yeah. For the next year. We're so unemployment. It's like, hey man, let's stick to this YouTube. We got unemployment coming. Let's see if we can make it work. Yeah. So if, we, if they had never fired us, we'd still be there. I'd still be there. Yeah, and Calling then up people, hey, um, this is Keith Hards, the um <laughs> or just the Henry Joe claim. Yeah, I'm just checking in with see how your car's doing. <laughs> oh, your car's messed up. Well, uh, hell, I can't do nothing for it. I tried my best. Have a good day. Thank you for being with Triple A California. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, blessings come in all sorts of in all sorts of ways. You guys were in yeah. the military. You guys were in the military for a while as well. Was this was this after or before this? Uh, this oh, this before. way after. We was in military okay. from ninety four to ninety eight. Yeah, this okay. was right out of high school. Because, gotcha. um, at the time, we was just trying to find ourselves and mm. do something productive with our life because all my friends mm. was getting locked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? The niggas still in jail. <laughs> <laughs> niggas get up like two, three weeks, they go right back. <laughs> I'm like, man, I went to, it's like the whole majority of their entire life has been in prison, been in jail. I was like, wow, man. And you know what I never noticed growing up? None of my friends' um, dads had, I mean, they had dads. None of them. Yeah, never, really? I never realized it. Mm. Yeah. You know? I when mean, you look we grew up without a dad, too. My dad died when we were, uh, he actually died on our 14th birthday. So, but... Mm. Uh, the school that we we're going to, which is Fidel Collinsville, um, they actually assigned us a mentor when my dad passed away, and they wanted a uh, male figure in our life, which yeah. really helped us. It was a it was a pastor. I forget his name; it's been so long ago. But I he, think his last name was Hawkins. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, pastor. His last Hawkins. name was Hawkins. Mm. It was a good black dude. Man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I used to laugh at him and make fun of him, but looking <laughs> back on it, that dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pastor Hawkins. He would come like every Tuesday or. Uh, Two days a week, and he would come see us on the weekends mm -hmm. and just talk to us about life after high school. Uh, yeah, just start setting your dreams and just know you can be yeah. whatever you want to be. You mm -hmm. know, stuff they don't tell black kids nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> they tell us white privilege and yeah, you know, you 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 black, you always gonna be black. You are gonna be a sorry ass <laughs> black person to the day you die. I mean, just having people like that in <laughs> life. Yeah. I mean, I think it set the foundation for us. But also, I got an older brother who was in the army. Yeah, and he was doing good for himself. So, and before before our dad passed away, well, he worked two jobs, so he was never home. He was always working. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so, but we noticed that 
Yeah. It's it's, no it's really important to see your dad, you know, busting his ass, working hard, yeah. Working hard for the family. And a lot of um kids my um uh, looking back on my friends, they didn't have that. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's the reason why they're criminals. Well, sure. they had dads, but they never saw him. And then when they did see him, they was probably selling drugs or beating up people. <laughs> So gee, I can understand why them fools in prison because yeah, yeah. that's what they learned from their yeah. from their dad, you know. Yeah, yeah my absolutely. Dad, he wasn't a bad person. He he wasn't gangs or anything like yeah. that. Good dude. Yeah, no doubt. Was, when when you when you go back to the the time when you were growing up and you compare the narrative, shall we say, as what it was like then versus what it's like now, how have, how have you seen that change, especially in the USA? I mean, I remember you. I used to see on TV like what's that commercial? Uh, Negroes mind. A horrible thing to waste and then they'll put an egg in a frying pan and fry it or <laughs> drugs or something you, do you, uh, i don't know it's like this i don't commercial. know what the hell you talking about oh you talking about them drug commercial no yeah it was uh it's like a war against drugs and then it's like it was this commercial it was yeah. meant for the black community it was um yeah the negro mind is a, a terrible thing to waste or mine okay. is a terrible thing to waste and yeah now you don't see anything like that i mean mm. the black community actually do not realize they control their own fate yeah they yeah. don't, they they think they need I don't yeah, know, politicians yeah. to help them be and it's it's all on you. Yeah. I mean look at Joe Biden's son. <laughs> dude, <laughs> your dad is the president, he's been in politics, but look 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 how horrible this dude is. This dude's mm. a crackhead. Where do you think he learned it from? <laughs> 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 Where, wherever there's smoke, there's fire. I mean, Hunter didn't learn that shit by himself. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no way in hell your daddy could be a politician, do everything right, and your son grow up and be a crackhead? No, man, it's not a coincidence. That's crazy, man. You're like, if you believe in white privilege, right, Zuby? Why your son stuck on a nigga drug? <laughs> <laughs> white people do coke. <laughs> no, they do heroin. They do crack and heroin. Every once in a while, you have a white dude to do some heroin. Yeah, but they don't do crack. <laughs> yeah, I crystal, mean, uh, crystal math more likely. Said he's the smartest man he knows. You can't be too smart and white if you're doing heroin and crack. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. a fair point. He's successful. He's white privilege right there, making me. <laughs> and and not to mention, remember his email, Zuby? Dude was using the N word and all that. Yeah. And mm. then look what they did to that head coach, um, of the Raiders, Gruden. Mm. Mm. It's just well, like, man, I don't understand what's going on in this world. And I'm pretty sure uh, Gruden's emails wasn't the only email that, you know, m m that could trigger people. Yeah. No, of course not, man. Well, it depends on what yeah. side you are, right? Right, right, right. It's a narrative being pushed. And yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So what was it that got you guys to make the shift into going into the political realm in a public sense? Uh, it was that um, it was a kid. I think it was somewhere in Texas at a Whataburger. He got attacked for wearing a mega hat. Oh, I, I think uh, I remember that. I think I remember yeah, that. Yeah, that was our very first political post. And before we did that video, me and my brother had been concerned for about a good part of my life. Well, well, I mean, a majority of our life we was we was liberal. But before that incident happened, we had been conservative about four and a half, maybe five years at that time. Okay. But we never came out politically and you yeah. know told anybody because we didn't want to really alienate half of our fan base, you know. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do that video. Yeah. <clears throat> we put the video up, and the only thing we said, we didn't even pick a side. We just said no one should be attacked for wearing a shirt or hat or expressing their First Amendment right. Mm -hmm. As soon as we throw that video up, I mean, it's like our subs was like this. As soon as we put that video up, that shit went like that. It was like wow. Bitcoin. This shit like, fell off a tape. <laughs> it was like Bitcoin in 2017. <laughs> it was at 3500 <laughs> So that pissed us off. It pissed us off because I was like, these people have been like supporting me, watching me for years, and then just mm. because I'm I'm voicing this opinion, yeah. now I'm garbage. Yeah. Mm. They they called us garbage. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not the on... guy, not the guy that was attacking the kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They called us garbage. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, so that pissed us off. It actually galvanized. I said, I don't want these people following me no more. So we start doing political videos. Nah, <laughs> keep been saying those words. He said, I'm tired of these niggas. I don't want these niggas following me. These niggas got to go. That's what she said. We got to get rid of these niggas. So we start doing the videos. And I had no idea we was going to gain the traction that we did. Yeah. I, 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 I knew we would gain followers talking politics, but... I didn't know what's gonna blow up the way it did. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I really did. And since we was in fitness and we was doing a relationship, I mean, we was doing comedy shows and um, and the love that we would get. Um, but it's nothing like the love we get now from conservatives at our shows. Yeah, I mean, we come out to a standing ovation. Yeah, conservatives mm-hmm. really support one another. I mean, conservatives really support other conservatives. And yeah. the love we get when we come out and when we leave is just like, yeah, it's just amazing. It's nothing. I we didn't we didn't envision any of this. Yeah. Yeah, white people. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna ask how how of the uh, I I assume there's been a a little bit of a of a demographic shift there. Oh man, our shows used to be like a mix. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a Van Halen concert. <laughs> <laughs> And there's one black guy in the front, yeah. and it's there with a white woman. <laughs> well, why? So why do you? That black guy sounds like a white dude. <laughs> you ain't well, got no. Oh, what's up, homie? You ain't got none of those niggas now. It's just straight educated brothers, man. They got brains. Yeah, but it's getting better. Like our last few shows we did mm-hmm. since the COVID. I mean, the black and brown is starting to come out, man. It was a lot better when we first initially came Okay, out. it was 20 people at one show. <laughs> hey, it's a start. It was it's a, a lot start. better than that. Like it's, it's a lot better than that. I mean, <laughs> black and brown people are starting to wake up, and they, they've been uh, our last tour. Our last show was in Oklahoma City. But now Oklahoma City, that was just white, white. Yeah, I'm that, talking about Texas. Like a clan rather. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All of that beers like me. And yeah. awesome, man. Is this the right show? <laughs> <laughs> no, but since there was an awesome crowd, man. They showed yeah. us a lot of love, man. They, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. does racism exist? Yes, but yeah, not like how they make it out to be. Yeah, mm-hmm, white mm-hmm. people don't care about race. They just want to be left alone. They want to keep their rights. Yeah, and that's yeah. why they support us. They don't care about race. That has nothing yeah, to do I with don't want to say it, man, but. I don't mean the it. table. The tables are flipped, man. Like back in the day, seventies, eighties, white a majority of white people. I mean, not a majority, but you know, a majority of the time when you saw racism, you saw it coming from a white person. You know, mm-hmm. but now you see it uh, normally from blacks, and nobody says anything. Yeah, yep. they say the most racist thing, and it just flies over everybody's head like it never happened mm-hmm. in the past. Yeah, it's because they they changed the they changed the definition as they've done yeah. with many other things. They've literally, yeah, you know, doesn't people, he have a meaning these days? Yeah, well, they say it does, but they'll say it's what do they say it is? It's it's prejudice plus power now. So yeah. you know, you hear people openly saying, "Well, black people can't be racist," which is a pretty wild get out of jail free card, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Bullshit! Black people, some racist ass people. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you my inbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These niggas might as well wear a damn clan outfit. It's man, it's it's weird. Um, yeah. it's it's weird. I've I've been in, on the receiving end of that myself several times online and it's it's a weird thing and I, I have to say it's also from black americans specifically this isn't from people i've got tons of followers all across africa i've got black followers in the uk etc but yeah. it's uh it's it's a particularly i don't even want to say it's a black american mindset because i don't think black most black americans are like that but that attitude is amongst a certain demographic of the black american population even racism towards say black people from other countries like you know africa you know african countries there's a there's a schism there where you know it's it's a it's a weird um it's a very weird weird concept and a weird thing to experience yeah. where on one hand you've got people saying like oh you know we need to uplift this community and you know there these are people who are decrying racism and whatever and then they'll be so quick with any, you know, you you disagree with them, or you feel different politically or socially or whatever, and the the guns come out blazing. It's very weird. Yeah, yeah. like some of the nicest people you meet, man, is uh, is is from Africa. It's like it's the American black that has the majority of the issues with other blacks being Republican or conservative. Like majority of the time when you meet somebody from from Africa, there's like totally different mindset, totally different people than some of the nicest people you ever meet. But you sit down and somebody from like a black from our urban neighborhoods, it's like, what the hell happened? It's like <laughs> night and day. It's yeah. like that that immigrant from Africa, they haven't been brainwashed by a media. And then mm. you sit down with somebody here from America, it's like some of the things they say, it's just anybody with any rational, rational mind or any common sense are like, man, 
just listen to what you're saying. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's like talking to a brick wall, really. That's yeah, it's about. it's it's really interesting because obviously, I, you know, I'm from the UK. I'm British and Nigerian, so I'm not a black American. Um, but it, it's really interesting because I think that the sort of story of black America and black Americans, whilst, of course, there, you know, it stems back to some of the most horrible stuff in human history. I think to me, it's, it's very much a story of triumph. Right. It's very much a story of a group of people like really, really overcoming some very significant obstacles and discrimination and true racism and all of that. And I think that if the story were framed as one of triumph more than one of just indefinite, permanent victimhood into the year 3000, then I think that would shift a lot of people's perspectives because you can recognize history and you can also recognize how history can have an impact on certain people in communities today, but it's another thing to have this permanent, woe is me, I'm a victim, you know, white people are evil narrative. You know, the people I see talking the most about white supremacy these days, it's, well, it's either, it's either woke, woke white people, or it's people who are, you know, black people who are stuck in this sort of victim mentality. And I think it's very, the reason it bothers me is because I think it's very, very disempowering. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's like one of the reasons why we came out as conservative, but mm. we we targeted it to black community and look look what happened. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's really frustrating yeah. because I'm um, when I'm, I'm out here telling you can, if you empower yourself, yeah. you can you can be successful in this country. Mm. And it's like when I say that. Oh man, you just trying to please the white man. You just you yeah. tap dance, you dance for the white man. It's like the white mm -hmm. man has nothing to do with this. Yeah. I mean, that's if 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 there's millions of immigrants in other countries across the world, they will gladly replace each and every black person in this country. <laughs> yeah. They say they want to be African. I was like, hey, let's do a trade then. Yeah. Yeah. They ain't I, trying to go to Africa. Yeah, I, no. I have African ancestry, but I don't even like that term African American. Yeah. Because it, it just signifies that you have like two nationalities. I have I'm African by ancestry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm not African American. I'm just American. Yeah. White people don't do that. But mm. the politicians, the media has then painted us as African American because they don't want you to ever forget you your ancestors were slaves mm. and you're gonna always need our help because yeah. there's still racist white people out yeah. there. And that's the whole point of like framing us as African American. We're yeah. Not, the, 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 to make us uh, different, to make us to separate us from other Americans. Yeah, That's you why. can be white in Africa. You just born in Africa. I was never born in. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, just a stupid American. Yeah, and you yeah. tell the other black liberals that man, they laugh at you. Yeah, and the do. reason why they're laughing is the same reason why Kamala Harris laugh, because they don't have an answer. They try to mm. laugh it off. Yeah. There's no way a black person in this country can call yourself an African when you're born in America. You never set foot in Africa. You don't even know the you don't even know the how many continents in Africa. You don't know that culture. Continents in Africa. I mean not continents. They're um countries. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know how many countries in Africa. Yeah. And they call themselves African. You're not. You you're just know. a yeah you don't know their cultures, their yeah. customs. You're just an American but they yeah. can't you can't put one of them fifty gallon jugs of water in your head and walk ten feet. <laughs> <laughs> when to be African, you got to be able to walk two miles of that shit. <laughs> Man, I think I'm British then. Maybe I need to revoke my uh, Nigerian citizenship. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I think I mean, it's, we have answered like you have. Answered. Hey, I, I think it's disrespect for, the, for me to call myself African when somebody actually comes from Africa and migrate here. That person has a right to call himself an African-American. Yeah. Mm. If you're born here, you have no right to say that. No mm. right. And I think it's disrespectful for you to call yourself an African when you're you don't have no culture. You didn't originate there. You wasn't born there. You in the same. I will put you in the same light as Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> <laughs> I would no, because yeah. you're not African. Africa just means nationality. It doesn't mean yeah. the race. Yeah. Because you were just born there. That's that, why that I continent, call myself yeah. an American. I'm black. That's my mm -hmm. race. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> yeah. But I'm American by nationality, and that's what African American. That's not a race. That's your mm -hmm. nationality that yeah. they painted you with. I and, hear that. It, and let me reiterate, if you're from this country, you're from Chicago, I don't care how dark skinned you are, you're still just a stupid black American. <laughs> one thing I noticed, one big difference between the, the UK and the US while we're on this topic is uh, is the, the labels, like the labels and the racialism. Um, yeah, it's a US thing. Yeah, it's really a US yeah. thing. You know, the 
what's the word? Wanting to put a prefix on everything, right? White American, Black American, African American, right. Asian American, Hispanic American, so on and so forth. People, people really like these labels, especially when it comes to race. In right. the UK, it would sound really, really weird if I said that I was African British or even even right. Black British, unless I'm doing a census form or something. Right. Uh, and they ask for right. ethnicity, then you know we might put African slash Black British, but in right. everyday conversation or on the news or in the media people here just don't don't talk that way um yeah, and in the u.s it's in everything we, uh, when we visited the united kingdom we've been out several times it's more like a class structure there it's no race it's it's no demographic it's more about you know rich poor middle class mm. you know that's what i found to, you know united kingdom to be it has nothing to do with your race or nationality or anything that's, that's yeah. just an agenda pushed here in the states yeah. Absolutely. How did you guys do the, how did your conversion from being liberal to being conservative come about? What, what was um, the story? Well, there? Being Very black, simple. Being we just picked up a book. <laughs> 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 I opened a book, read two pages. I mean, I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are, you are, if you're you are one gonna... stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know how anybody could be liberal. Liberalism is nothing more than an art of victimizing yourself every day by your differences. Yeah. Conservatism mm -hmm. is all about freedom. It's all about creating the best ideas, working hard, entrepreneurship. Conservatism empowers people. I don't know why on earth anybody would consider themselves to be a liberal, well, progressive, or anything. Being black here in America, we're, we're raised to be like Democrats because they I don't know, cause you know my mama was a good woman, but she didn't know shit about politics. <laughs> Matter of fact, look back, looking back, mama's stupid as hell. <laughs> she loved Obama when she was alive. I yeah. said, my mama, take that black man off your shirt. <laughs> that man is evil. Yeah, my mama had Obama shirt. She wore that shit three hundred and six five days a year. Yeah, but it was cool when he got elected. I was like, man, cause it gave it showed me that in America. Mm -hmm. You could be anything you want to be. And that mm -hmm. was the last time I voted Dem Democrat yeah. was for that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you just sit back and listen to both sides, yeah. I mean, both sides got garbage that comes with them. But if yeah. you sit and listen to both sides, the right, you keep your rights, you keep your freedoms. With the left, it's all about victimization and so some about getting somebody else's money to help you. Yeah. You have the power to help yourself. Yeah. Who bought it? Who? Who? Why would anybody vote for higher taxes? That's crazy as hell. Joe Biden ran on that. I'm going to raise your taxes. And <laughs> raise your <laughs> like in the past, whenever a president said that we was going to raise taxes, that hurt that reelection. Yeah. Mm. This dude gets 81 million votes. <laughs> the most yeah. of all time he told everybody he's raising your taxes. Yeah. And the they want to raise taxes even more. Oh yeah, I mean, of course. It's the ridiculous. Is, if everybody sat down and added up what you pay in state, federal, sales tax, tax you pay on your gas, tax you pay on whatever you're buying something. I mean, a majority of our check is going to the government and you're not going to see any return on that. None of that. All you're doing is making those salaries of these politicians better, greater. Mm -hmm. They're not going to help you. You're just making your government much more powerful. And these people on the left talking about they want to take away all the power from police and government. Why the hell you keep voting liberal? Yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's just stupid. Yeah, the thing is, people people like to be taken care of. I mean, one of the biggest realizations I've had, I, I already sensed it. You know, I always thought that the notion that people valued liberty and freedom more than they do the illusion of safety and security. I, I always suspected that even in the West, that was a little bit of a myth. Uh, but the past two years have shown me entirely. That that is just not the truth. Whether you're looking at the USA or Western Europe, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, looking at all the craziness going on now, it's very, very clear to me that most people value the illusion of safety and security more than they truly value liberty and individualism and being able to make right. their own choices and decisions. It, it's never been more clear to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know something that's more clear to me than ever. I didn't realize how stupid people are. I mean, people are really dumb. Yeah. The people on the left, <laughs> that arguments, it's like after I hear that argument, I just want to take my head and bash it into a brick wall. <laughs> These people like like the whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing. This is white supremacy. He didn't kill no black people. It's he wild. has no ties to white supremacy. And they 
I'm like, what? What the? What the? It's crazy to say you got a kid getting attacked by grown adults and that's white supremacy. <laughs> Dude, it's wild. I don't know if you saw in the independent newspaper here in the in the UK, and also I was told yeah. by supporters in, in Germany and other countries. You know, they reported in the independent in the UK. They reported this week that he shot three black BLM protesters. That's that's what they said in the in the mainstream media. That's what yeah. they said. I mean, they want to talk about people spreading disinformation and misinformation. I mean, right. yeah, and this thing that. happened a year ago. So, right. you you know, you've had time to get your facts straight. And it's right. just yeah. wild how they can do that. But it's but this is the thing. The media knows how stupid people are. Yeah. People are stupid. Yeah, people don't I double mean, check anything. I double check everything I hear from Fox. People mm -hmm. are so easily manipulated. They're just dumb. Yeah. It's like, I don't even know how these dudes function, these yeah. people. They're dumb for you to fall for some. Even the one guy that got shot, he was screaming the N word yep. before Kyle Rittenhouse shot him. Mm -hmm. right. Just like get that. He, uh, <laughs> uh, he called him. <laughs> get that yeah. nigga. Yeah. <laughs> white boy run after another white boy saying, "Get that nigga." Mm -hmm. And That's and this is someone who's been com convicted of raping five yeah. children. Kids. Yeah, these are all, yep. all of them are felons. Man, yep. and, and that's what I'm saying. People are dumb. You you're gonna stand on that hill and fight that battle with that pedophile. Right. And you're it's looking wild. at a 17 year old kid, 16, 17, however yeah. old he who's was, who's being attacked, who's being chased. I mean, who chases a white boy with a rifle? <laughs> <laughs> and then when you get that, you pick up your skateboard. Skateboard. <laughs> I mean, that's this not, shouldn't have never went to cross. Like, that's not, people are so. I want to cuss on your show so much. I'm effing stupid. Yeah, that's not that's not white supremacist. That's Darwinism. You were meant yeah. to die that way. <laughs> it's... And I don't get it. And I get. And we talked about that case. And I'm getting messages from black people. Yeah. Calling me a sambo or a salad. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. I should die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you ought to see the black celebrities, comedians, actors. How uh, they're going in on this this little boy basketball player LeBron James. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if you just sit down and look at the facts of the case, I told black people, just imagine Kyle Rittenhouse, black, put some gold teeth in his mouth, turn his hat backwards, tell him to start sagging his pants, give him a pair of Yeezys, gold <laughs> chain, and re-look at the video and see if you see a difference. A difference. Because yeah. they're so blinded by their own racism, they didn't see a sixteen year old kid being attacked by three grown felons. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, if you just take, ah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> these, 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 I'm telling you, man, liberals, they are, they are, they, 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 I mean, yeah. they're just stupid. They're just not very smart people. Yeah. And I'm not saying conservatives are these bright intellectuals and no, nah, we just. Compared to them, they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, though, don't. They do, look like Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> The, one, one thing that's really shifted, though, and I mean, you know, I'm more politically engaged now than I was, say, 15 years ago or, you know, 10 yeah. years ago. But if I if I think back to the, the, the Democratic Party when I was growing up, I think of, like you know, the Bill Clinton administration, even even the Obama administration, they were not this crazy. Like the, yeah. the difference, yeah. oh, the yeah. difference between the, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party or the left and the right or however you want to put it has really widened in the past yeah. decade. It wasn't, right. you know, there were there, there's always been differences and conflict and whatever, but right. it's like in the past 10 years, I mean, I don't even use it for, for a lot of the people you're talking. I don't, I don't even use the term liberal because a lot, yeah, not. no, no, we're talking authoritarian leftism. Even if you're looking at all the, the, the COVID policies and whatever, it's like, right. yeah. there's nothing liberal yeah. about this. Like Ron DeSantis is being liberal. Greg Abbott is being is being liberal, right? If you think of what the word right. is supposed to mean, it's supposed to be based on freedom, individual rights, civil liberties, equal treatment. Right. I mean, they're pushing segregation. They're pushing, right. you know, locking people in the houses. These are the my body, my choice people. They're trying to force injections on people, all of this stuff. And it's just like what's happened in that 10 to 15 year period where you've gone from 2008 with Obama, whether someone likes Obama or not, you 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 can't honestly say that him and his party is the same as what we're dealing with now with you know the squad and all these just crazy people yeah i think a majority of the problem is you know if you look at uh the republicans and conservatives for the most part they're pretty much the same i would say last 10 years nothing mm -hmm. too crazy has changed about them it's the same policies same structure but when you look at everything that's been happening with the democrats Mm. It's been a drastic change with them. I mean, huge change. I mean, they 
like you said, back in Clinton, Obama, it wasn't things weren't like they were Both now. Almost against uh, illegal immigration, yeah. stuff like that. It was mm-hmm. like yeah. it was just little nuances. Supposedly, the Democrat was going to help, yeah, you know, minorities more. Mm-hmm. Right. And everybody then, knows that's bullshit. But they, but it's I think that's what's pushing the divide now, though. Yeah, I they, d- got, they, they use that. Um, Shut up! Let me keep going. <laughs> Like um, they use that racial divide our differences to push these progressive agendas. Yeah, they use they divide us to, to break us up. That's how they gain the power. I think to us. that's why you got a hundred genders. You got, <laughs> you know what I mean? You got a hundred genders. You got, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the majority of the problem is mainstream media. They're not really doing that job. But I think the majority of the problems we have now is because the left they just went too far left. Hey, you know what's way ironic? too far left? You know what's ironic about this? Nah, I ain't gonna say it. I shouldn't say it. Well, what you gonna say? Nah, it's, it's, it's too far right. <laughs> it's too far. <laughs> it's gonna be a joke, but it's it's taking it too far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> no racist white people like the Klan. You better not let them black people get rights. <laughs> then look what happened. You get a black president. Look what happened. It's been downhill ever since. <laughs> Hey, you know what, Zuby? When Obama came president, I said, man, finally black people gonna realize, hey, you just work hard. No, nah, now nah, they trying to say this is the most racist country on earth right now. Yeah, how can a black mm-hmm. man get elected? Yeah, explain that, Zuby. If this country is so racist, how mm-hmm. the hell did a black man beat a white woman and a white man? And the majority of this country is white. Yeah, he beat a white woman in yeah. the primary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, for the Democrat, and then he beat two yep. white dudes. He got mm-hmm. done. He I got. Mean, he's a real white dude. They're like white, white. <laughs> <laughs> like George Washington. <laughs> McCain. He shit. came out there with his name, Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> It looked like a damn terrorist, and, and he and, won. And he won. How if this country's? How do you win? Unless your name is Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> yeah, and if this country's racist, science it's not racist. Yeah, it can't Most, be. Majority of people in this country are great people. Yeah, how can mm. he won the popular vote and the mm-hmm. electoral college? Yeah, how how does that happen in a racist country? It's impossible. No, nah, but one, one, one <laughs> thing is though, one, once the Man, narrative, once the narrative is there, I'm just joking. <laughs> the hell's wrong with this dude? Zeus? What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> okay, like, get serious on this. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild though. I mean, with a lot of the narrative, and I know this is gonna this is gonna lead into your new book, but it seems like they're really, really pushing to, you know, li- racism has been in, on life support for a long, long time. And they're yeah. just they're just shocking it and shocking it and trying trying to trying to keep it alive. It's almost like, you know, I call a lot of the woke stuff. I, I just call it neo racism, right? A lot of what they call anti racism. It's like this is just neo racism. They've just inverted it slightly and you know changed the target, changed the. I mean, sometimes, you know, you you'll hear some of these woke, super woke people talking, and I'm like, man, you're using the exact same rhetoric as an actual like clan member or something. I can't even right. differentiate between what you're saying and the way that you're talking down to, you know, calling people BIPOC and POC and, you know, in the, in the UK, in the UK, we have BAME, B-A-M-E, which stands for like black and minority ethnic. So they're just giving people these acronyms. And I'm just like, why, why do you just need a term that means not white? Right. Unless you're actually in this plan, why do you need this term? (laughs) Give me credit. They may be stupid, but they, at least they're creative. (laughs) Very, very creative, but, yeah. yeah. So I want to I want to talk a little bit a little bit about uh, your new book. So you you guys have written a you guys have written a children's book. Is that right? Yeah, I would have never thought in a million years I'd be selling a children's book. Yeah, we gotta get these <laughs> niggas when they're young, man. <laughs> <laughs> gotta catch these niggas as soon as they come out of the womb. Yeah, like like we we uh, co-authored a book with Brave Books, right? Yeah. And um, now Brave Books was founded by like con- conservative parents and. They became aware that, you know, um, that on the left, they, they've taken control of all media, whether it be the schools, mainstream media, um, colleges, and they're pushing this progressive agenda. That's why Brave Books was started. Mm-hmm. So uh, to push traditional values on this, 
new next generation of kids because yeah. right now the only people reaching out to them is the progressive left. And that's mm-hmm. why Brave Bucks was started. Yeah. To incentivize to hey to kids, adults to use traditional values when it comes about judging people. You, like that CRT creating I I they say it was a critical race theory. I think it's more like creating racial tension because you mm-hmm. have a lot of black people looking at white people like they're crazy. And then you gonna you have white people looking at black people it's like, man, what the hell's wrong with you people? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's it's just stupid the way everybody look at things. So we wrote this book to to teach kids not to judge people by the color of their skin or as uh, as opposed to our book. Uh, it's about three cheetahs, not to judge them on the color of their fur. Yeah. Okay. So to yeah, judge you people. got spotted cheetahs and you got striped cheetahs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and it's directed more at kids. Like talking to a kid about CRT, like, yeah. What the hell are you talking about, man? <laughs> and the foundation of this book is just the spotted cheetahs are, you know, they're feuding with the, uh, striped, the striped cheetahs, cheetahs yeah. because mm-hmm. they think the striped cheetahs are out to get them and they, they rig the race against them. So yeah. it's to, to make kids, to help kids look at, um, somebody by the content of the character, not by the color of the skin. Yeah, what friend. Martin Luther King? I mean, what's yeah. wrong with what Martin Luther King stood for? Yeah. Oh man. Judge if it, people by the content of yeah. their character, their skin, your gender, none of that matters. Yeah. You can be nice and white. You can be uh, nice and black. It doesn't you matter. You can be you... evil and black, evil and white. It doesn't. Yeah. It's not based on your skin color. It's more about that person's character and how they think and feel about other people. Yeah. And but see, CRTs. <clears throat> out here to divide us. That's all mm-hmm. it's there for. It's yeah. to make black people feel like they're inferior. Right. That's the only reason. This this is all about power. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that whole white privilege term, that's just man, if you actually believe that well, I don't I can understand why people believe because they're stupid, but yeah, just I, 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 I mean, think white privilege. Somebody's privileged because they're white. Mm-hmm. I mean I've seen white homeless people. I've seen Yeah. I, I mean you, everybody's got privilege. Barack Obama's kids are privileged. Of course. LeBron James, he's privileged. His mm-hmm. kids are privileged. Mm-hmm. How about O.J. Simpson? He killed two white people. R. Kelly, <laughs> he's been pissing on black kids for decades. <laughs> yeah, privilege. Privilege knows no color. Yeah, privilege, <laughs> privilege doesn't, it's it doesn't have a race. It's yeah. not even human. It's just a word. Mm-hmm. But that's what they do on the left. Yeah. They're very they're just they, they, these people are very talented. They're very creative, and yeah. they know dumb people just don't get it. <laughs> and a lot of people just do not think for themselves. They yeah. rather for uh, somebody on the TV with a suit to tell them what's going on. They don't want to take the time and the energy just to think for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Just well, like, I think it's hitting people's. On the week. Yeah, I think it's hitting people's emotional buttons and yeah. taking advantage of existing grievances. Right. And I think another thing that they do, which is very slick, is that it gives people a permanent alibi. Right. right. So if you if you can convince yourself that the, the system, what, you know, whatever the system is or the structure is rigged against you, then you have a permanent alibi for any type of failure. Right. You, you can excuse. just say, ah, yeah, you've, you've got a permanent excuse. So I think the reason why people get so angry um, right. at people like yourselves or, at you know, Candace Owens or any prominent uh, you know, say black conservative, especially, especially in the USA is because you are removing the alibi of millions and millions of people. You see the same thing happening with feminism, right? You can blame everything on the patriarchy, blame everything, you know, you, you know, you don't even, even describe, define what the patriarchy is. You just say that there's this right. thing out there in the ether called the patriarchy and it's holding down women. So then if you, if you fail, if you, you know, don't get your way in anything, you can always just come back and you can blame that thing. If you're black, you can always blame systemic or structural or institutional racism. Yeah. You can blame, well, hey, man, the system's the system's white white supremacist. So you know, how am I supposed to succeed when the system yeah. is all is all rigged against me? And it totally, um, it's a complete alibi for any kind of personal responsibility or individual decision making. Even I mean, I've seen the wildest things blamed on institutional racism or you know white supremacy or whatever when there's no there's no white people even involved in the picture just like just like they've done they've, they've just like they've done with the inverse with the Carl Rittenhouse thing where they somehow yeah. turned it into a black issue despite the fact that there's no black people involved <laughs> and man as you said it's creative like I, I almost as much as I hate it I, I almost have to give them some kind of some kind of props for the um for the for this year it's voodoo it's like witchcraft it's like yeah, how have you right. managed to take this issue 
and twist it so hard into this other thing. And you've now got millions of people just believe in something that's the, the opposite of what it was. Yeah, people are just really, really dumb. And this goes to show you the people that's pushing that narrative, that agenda, that that um, that plot. They don't really care about this country or bringing us together. They say they do, but yeah. actions speak way louder than yeah. words. You yeah. see people that spewing this garbage is just pure evil. They are the most anti-American uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's like, how dumb do you got to be to believe this? I don't know how these people function. <laughs> What's wild, though? This? Yeah, like uh, they say they call Trump uh, a white supremacist, racist. And you look at some of the things Joe Biden has said like that. That white guy <laughs> said niggas don't even know how to use a computer. Oh, man, man. They can't get it. Like, he said like how stupid you got to be. You can't go. You can't find a DMV and get an ID card. Yeah. Nope. And nope. and nobody says anything. He said, mm -hmm. yeah, black people can't find out where to get vaccinated, so we're gonna go knock on your house." Like they can't read, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody says anything. Yeah, he nope. says some of the most condescending, racist things about black Imagine people. Imagine if Trump mm -hmm. said that. Look, black people don't know how to use computers. We gotta uh, reach out to the black people, go to the houses. I mean, what if he said that? Yeah, that is wild, his man. Ass. <laughs> yeah, Ugh, man. It's so wild, man. How do you? What do you guys think is the way, is the way through this? How? I mean, are you still? Here's a question: Are you still trying to reach people like this, or have you kind of just said, yeah, "Screw it, we're not gonna, we're, we're not gonna be able to reach yeah, them"? I mean, I, I'm yeah. not really targeting them. I mean, they're yeah. gonna see it because black people love to watch black people and see what they're doing. Because I know I have a lot of black people watching me. I know because yeah. they just because I, I got like cousin look such and such shirt this with me. This is your cousin. They talking. They talking about you behind your back. Like, <laughs> so it's like I just choose to put the message out there. Yeah, yeah. I think I, um, we've did a great job in reaching white liberals. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Because they at least sit back and listen. <laughs> you the know, hardest thing is is to help anybody or any intervention or anything if they're not listening, willing to put in the work. Yeah. You might as well be talking to a damn vegetable. <laughs> Yeah, mm. so it's like we we continue to put the message out. I think it's important to see yeah. black people like us putting the message out there. Yeah, because if if it's not us or you or other yeah. black people, who you got? Snoop Dogg, <laughs> <laughs> black entertainers. Yeah. And, yeah, and the thing, the whole, the, the reason why a majority of black people are as stupid as they are, and they are stupid. I mean, it's not, it's no, it's no way around it. Our communities are some of the dumbest people on this earth. Do you know? <laughs> I mean, they are just do, stupid. Do you know? Do you know? Uh, 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 only, do you know the what? The only I, way that's going to change is is because of our culture. Our mm. TV shows need to change. Our the our entertainers need to put out a better message. They need to start thinking a lot more before they put out things. It's just the whole culture that's around black people, Hollywood, mainstream media, celebrities. Until these people wake up and generally start to think what's better for black folks before they say anything. I mean, that's never going to change. It's yeah. mm. the black community is never going to be get better until Hollywood, Hollywood and Democrats take their hold off of them and actually preach to them the right things in life. But why, why would they, they want to do that? Because that's never going to change with blacks. Never. Yeah. But there's no reason why they would be incentivized to do that. They're incentivized yeah, to right. do the opposite because they want to keep keep power and keep votes coming in. I, I think one thing, you know, I'd be hesitant to you know, <laughs> call so many people stupid, but I think that the big no, problem to me is, yeah, no, I, oh, they stupid, man. No, not the majority of them. Well, 90% of them voted for Biden. Them, but <laughs> <laughs> what, what else you want me to say? <laughs> I'll tell you what I think it is. I, I think it's emotionality. I think it's emotionality. Yeah. And I think that is how the, the left, ignorance. yeah, Probably. you know, the, the left side right, of the man. political, yeah, mm -hmm. the left side of the political aisle is great at capturing emotionality, right? And as much as people like to think that they're logical and they're rational and whatever, the truth is a huge percentage of people, if not most people, are largely driven by emotion, right? They make emotional yeah. decisions first and then they kind of use their brain to rationalize it later. So they often just go with whatever makes them feel good or this thing makes them outraged or it makes them angry or whatever. I mean... Look, even if you look at a lot of the criticisms of Donald Trump, right, I think that what he did is he really kind of split people along the emotionality over the emotionality line, right? I kind of think the same thing's happening with the whole COVID pandemic situation. And it's kind of like people who are able to kind of 
stay calm and look, look, look at things more objectively and kind of remove your emotions from the picture right. versus just going with like raw feeling. You know, a lot of the criticisms of Trump have nothing, have very little to do with his policies or like things he really did. Right. It's more how he made people feel. He made a lot of people feel bad. You know, they, oh, I just don't, I don't like the way he looks. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like, uh, you know, his tweets make me angry. It's this and that. It's not really, you know, and I can understand some of those criticisms, but I'm like, well, if you look beyond that, I mean, again, I'm, I'm an outsider. I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. But in terms of actually being a president, in terms of the actual policies, and like you guys were saying, leaving people alone, right? Trump is clearly, Trump, Trump is clearly way better than Biden. Yeah, clearly. I think, um, I think a lot of it too, when, when it, it comes to uh, why I say black people are so stupid, it's just like, I get frustrated and I say that because mm. Um, when it become, when it be, when in your life when it when it comes to you becoming an adult, you have to stop thinking based on emotion. That I think that's uh, the black community has to just grow up. Cause if you're still living your life uh, on you based on your emotions, then you're not an adult yet. Mm. And a lot of blacks need to grow up and 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 look at things for what they really are. I, I understand where you're coming from about Trump. Um, he doesn't say the most nicest things but then you got the media who takes those things spin it to make him look like even like a worse person mm -hmm. when at the very initial beginning when he made those statements he's actually you know putting people in a spot or they're fighting for our country he's standing up for what true americans believe in yeah and um, when he's a lot when he's critical about the whole kaepernick situation I, I can understand why that would upset some people but you got to understand from you got to look at two things from both directions mm -hmm. he's he thinks what you're doing is wrong. I mean, even though you might have the right to do so, I mean, you, I mean, it's just a different perspective. And then you have mainstream media just taking his opinions, what he's expressing, just twisting around. I think a majority of the problems that we have in this country is because of mainstream media. Everyone's mm -hmm. got an agenda. Everybody wants to paint a different picture. Yeah, but um, like what you're saying, Michael Mick said all this stuff before they killed yeah. him. He was yeah. calling black people stupid. Yeah. Why y'all keep voting for Democrats? It's not going to change your life. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was very vocal about that, yeah, about the, the Democrats. And when he said that two days later, he was shot and killed. He used the exact same I words mean, I'm using now. Yeah, he mm -hmm. was calling them dumb, and they was clapping. Yeah, we some stupid people. Yeah, yeah. you the man, Malcolm. <laughs> and yeah. he put that message out there. And it's yeah. and what we in 2021, it's been yeah. 80 years later. Yeah, mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. It's got yeah. worse. You can't sugarcoat what's going on in the black community. You can't. You have to show these people tough love. Until they wake up and start thinking more objectively and cut away their emotions and start being Amen. accountable for that situations, Amen. they just do need to wake up. Mm, how strongly connected do you think that is with something we were talking about earlier, which is father absenteeism? Because yeah. as we know, broadly speaking, that ability to manage one's emotions tends to come more from the masculine side than right. the feminine side. So I wonder if this is it to some degree related to the sort of absence of masculinity and male role models. And so people perhaps in some ways, and I, I think you see this spring out in various ways, people just not knowing how to control their emotions, whether it's anger or it's frustration right. or it's aggression or it's just right. like, you I, know, I, I, I think I, that's a great point because if you yeah. look at every, a majority of people that's in prison, they didn't have a dad, whether they're mm -hmm. white, black or brown. Yep. So that, that is a huge part of the problem. It's yeah. definitely, I mean, well, I, statistically I think, proven that if you grow up in a single family household where there's no dad, chances are you're going to have a life of crime. Yeah, but I think overall it's just our culture at yeah. the end mm -hmm. of it. It's, a, it's in our TV shows, it's in our movies, it's in our music, it's yeah. in everything we see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there's no other demographic that's that tells black people if you sound a certain way, you, you're trying to be white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no other race on this yeah. planet that says that to each other right mm -hmm. as a black person you gotta look talk dress and act a certain way if yeah. you're not you're trying to be white that's a cultural thing yeah mm -hmm. that's why i say a lot of our ignorance and stupidity is from our own is self-inflicted i mean we created this all these shows that we got on tv our music everything that's around our culture is is green lighted by white people white liberals yeah and I don't think that's by coincidence. That's why I call these people stupid because I want to make them upset. I want them to listen to me. It's not like <laughs> that I'm trying to put them down or, or I hate black people and say, no, you're stupid. I'm, I was stupid. 
I was stupid for the majority of my life until I looked in the mirror and I said, I'm going to do something with my life. Everything that happens to me is because of me and not mm-hmm. because of some imaginary white man in a suit that's a white supremacist. I hold my own life and my own, my own destiny. I just have to work hard. I have to come up with better, de- make better decisions and come up with better ideas to improve my life. Nobody's going to give you that. Hey, I remember mm-hmm. when I was uh, younger, I remember I went to like, a, I think it was a Macy's. <laughs> I went there, right? <laughs> And uh, I was like, I'm gonna apply for credit because the dude in front of me, the woman asked me, "Can she you apply for credit?" And when I got up there, she didn't say nothing. I said, "Hey, hey, I want to apply for some credit." <laughs> <laughs> so I applied for the credit card. Right? He got it. I got turned down. I was like, "Man, this is white supremacy." <laughs> <laughs> but that's because I was ignorant at the time. Yeah. I had horrible credit. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? No, you're being too nice. You were stupid at the time. Yeah, I didn't. I, didn't, I just thought it was something to do with my race. But because I was young, I was ignorant. It would have been easy for somebody to manipulate how I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're young, yeah. that's why when people vote the first time around, typically they always vote Democrat. Why? Because mm-hmm. they're stupid. They're yeah. ignorant. They, they just whatever. Yeah. But that race card is very powerful. That's the main reason why the majority of black people vote how they vote. Mm-hmm. They want to say it's because of policies, but they can't. They can't. They can't emphasize on what po- that policy is. Is always the right is racist, mm-hmm. and Democrats are for blacks, which is total lie. Nobody's for blacks. Mm-hmm. Conservatives are not for blacks, and liberals are not for blacks. Those people are for themselves. They want your vote. Yes. That's the only reason why they're up there talking and saying all these nice things. Yeah, they don't give a shit about nobody. Majority of times about anybody. Yeah, the only thing that's out there for black people is the Constitution. Yeah, they don't even use it. They don't even know it exists. I don't think. Yeah, it's like it's just it's just yeah. It's until the, the whole this on black people until they wake up and they empower themselves and they stop thinking their own emotion and until Hollywood and mainstream media, in which I know they're never going to do. But you know the the main reasons why we became conservatives because I have an older brother mm-hmm. that he was conservative. He was Republican. I thought he was just Uncle Tom at the time, but he put that little seed <laughs> in my ear, you know. I started listening. I came across Ben Shapiro. I couldn't stand his white ass. <laughs> man, this white man's smart as shit. This is white privilege. This is some bullshit. This white man's got to answer for everything. But the more I listen to Ben Shapiro, the more he made sense. The more I listen to Larry Elder, the more sense he made. Man, like, first, that first one was listening to Ben said, y'all get him. Get this white man. <laughs> <laughs> Then we was like listening to um Larry Elder. Then yeah, I came across Candace Owens, mm. which made me feel like I was going crazy. Yeah, okay. Then I came across you on Twitter. It's like, man, I'm yeah. not the only black person out here that thinks this way. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want less taxes, less government, more rights, freedom of speech, freedom to carry a firearm? I don't go anywhere without my gun on me. I mean, anybody. It, I mean, it's just I don't understand why people don't want to have their own individual freedoms and rights to do what they want. They it's much kind of yeah. like what Zuby said, man. What did mm-hmm. Zuby say? They want somebody to take care of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> want somebody to take care of. Give me some security. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. work like that. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's uh, you know, I think modern Western society has become infantilized in many, many ways, and I think that with that comes that childish desire to always be always be be taken care of and as well if you you know if you want to get a little bit deeper i think if you remove if you remove god and religion from the equation then the highest thing is the state right the highest thing is the state it's the government that's the highest power and that's the moral authority and that's that that's what it is and so you know i think as human beings people always look up right is it you know we're hierarchical creatures right and it's like okay look up and if the thing at the top is you know some politician or some celebrity you know, whatever it is, then that's what a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people are going to, are going to latch onto that. But if you believe that there's something, you know, either that or, or either that or they're at the top, right? So either it's like you're at the top or the government's at the top. But I think, and I think that's part of the reason why, um, you know, in, in every country, let alone in the USA, for sure, you know, more religious people tend to be more conservative. I think there's a lot of reasons for it, but I think part of it is this notion that you're, the highest authority isn't the government. The highest authority is not the state and it's, it's not yourself, right? There's something, there's something above all that. And that's where your rights also come from, 
So if the government is trying to take away this right or take away that right or infringe on this or infringe on that, it's like, no, that's not where, you know, you're not my daddy. Whereas to other people, it's like, yeah, the government is my daddy. This politician is going to take care of me. And even though no matter how many times they prove that they're not going to take care of you, people still want to believe in this in this dream. You know, they still want to believe that Santa Claus is coming and bring, bringing them their gifts. And, you know, every four years, cool, maybe we can switch Santa Claus. But um, it, it, it never like, materializes. Uh, this whole pandemic would open a lot of people's eyes, you know, because during this pandemic, I mean, I think every country, every I mean, we're just close to having every man for himself because mm. cops were stopped responding yep. to certain calls. I mean, a lot of people don't realize, you know, we was this close to like every man for himself. And, and, and I tell people the state can't protect you. You have to mm. take that upon yourself to take care of yourself. That's why we have the second amendment. I mean, mm. you saw that first time with the riots and stuff, right? Cops oh, yeah. didn't show up. Like yeah. if the cops was in, um, well, well, uh, that incident with Kyle Rittenhouse, the cops were out there doing their job. It would have never came to that. Yeah. No. You know, but the cops can't protect everybody. It's not enough of them. Yeah. Uh, it's, it doesn't make sense because, you know, the left, they want to do away with a lot of uh, police. They mm -hmm. want to do away with the Second Amendment. I mean, if things go wrong and every man's for himself, who's going to protect you? You can't. You just Social vote workers. away your right to protect yourself. Yeah. Social you vote workers. away all your rights for a police officer to take care of you. And there's not that many police to begin with. They can't take care of everybody mm. i don't i understand people don't like guns but guns are like insurance you don't want it until you need it mm -hmm. like i don't necessarily like having to walk around with a, a firearm but i have to because mm. my damn inbox and these niggas making threats mm. <laughs> so i have to walk around with a firearm i don't necessarily like it but that's my right and i have to take it upon myself to protect me and my family mm. no police officer can do that only i can do that until people wake up, like the state cannot protect you. They can't. They Man, can't even. That's, uh, that's powerful. I mean, I actually posted something on Twitter today. It's going viral right now where I said that it's possible that the only thing standing between the population of the world and complete global tyranny is the USA Second Amendment. Yep. Which is that's, that's absolutely deep. true because as soon as we yeah. lose that, everything mm -hmm. else is gone. Yeah, and it's not theoretic. It's not theoretical anymore either because yeah, yeah. we're seeing what's happening and you know if you look at places like Australia, Canada, yeah, and some of the crazy. blue states in the USA, New Zealand, some parts of western Europe, it's like, hey, you know not so long ago Australians and New Zealanders were bragging about giving in their citizens yeah. guns and less than 10 years later, you know, I think just a few years later in New Zealand's case, uh, the government is completely turning on people. They're shipping people off to camps now. Australia just announced that they're now, right. if you test positive with, with the Rona yeah, in certain okay. provinces, they're shipping you out to a camp. They got the army out there. Like, yeah, it's crazy. wild. It's crazy. They haven't been able to come or go out of their country for 21 months now. Like, it's Yeah, I nutty. don't think that would ever happen in the United States. If they did away with no. the second man, it would be a civil war in this country. There you go. Exactly. So I, I think, think that, that the... See, we see what's going on in other countries. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, that's the main reason why we had a civil war. With the with the the north and the south is because of uh, against tyranny against the British. I was like, uh, if people read their damn history books, they realize how important the Second Amendment, the First Amendment is. Yeah, the British want the Civil War. No use. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> the British. Oh, uh, yeah. You you give a fuck. I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> that Second Amendment, that First uh, Second Amendment is the most important thing. Mm, the yeah. most important thing. Once you lose that Second Amendment, it's so it's so much easier for them to take away your First Amendment. Yeah. And I think I mean, this I is the thing. Yeah, the, the Revolutionary War. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So the, the book you, damn wars. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the book you, the book you guys have out now, is that is that available now? Tell people more about it and where they can get it. Yeah, it's at um hogstwins.bravebooks.us uh, yeah. or bravebooks.com. It's yeah. a children's book and they have a whole um series of books. Yeah. It's because the uh, the founders of our brave books, they're, they're uh, conservative parents, and they realize that there's a real war for the hearts and minds of this generation's yeah. kids. Yeah. And they created this alternative platform to push more traditional ideas and not all yeah. this progressive woke stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have all kinds of books. It comes to the Second Amendment, um, CRT with our yeah. book. And uh, it's just to give uh, kids a foundation of traditional values yeah. that's always worked. Right. In this country. It's like a uh, subscription service where you get a new book every month. Yeah, for okay. the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And what's the name what's the name of the book? More than spots and stripes. You actually got a um yeah. 
Hey, there we go. There we go. There we go. If you're watching the video, then you can see that right there. More than spots and stripes. <laughs> Get that good sideways at you. Hey, Look at that hey. damn striped supremacy right there. That's <laughs> <laughs> a great uh, book. It's got yeah. a great message behind it. Yeah, and it's even exercises in the back for where the kids can participate with, with the their parents, parents and yeah. stuff. So it's okay, like no. a whole interaction with your kids, your mom, your dad, family. It brings family together and it just, you know, preaches their traditional values and things that's like awesome that. man uh, bef- before we wrap this up i i have to know what what is the what was the origin of your famous twin muscle workout video intro wh- wh- how oh, did that the, how did that come about oh the intro <laughs> the intro yeah, <laughs> what's, no, um, what's the story of that intro i don't know this i don't even know how that shit started <laughs> we just, <laughs> we just keep with just clowning and he just started <laughs> We would cut on the camera, he would just do something different every day, and it just materialized into this great <laughs> local. Yeah, it all started with I cut the camera on, and I wasn't real good at editing, so I would just make sure I look good for <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, man, that was that was crazy. I look back at those guys, look, they look insane. <laughs> Like man, I just watched the videos for the intros and outros. <laughs> oh man, those, those yeah. intros, those those used to kill me, man. And then the right. the coming out, the coming out the bushes, the coming out the bushes on him. Yeah, I know. Who's that? I will we'll be sitting on the porch sipping lemonade on after church with grandma. And who's that coming my driveway? <laughs> Come out the bushes, though. It's terrible. Yeah. It's just, it's just really weird, man. Yeah. yeah. We're, just, we're just goofing off and having yeah. fun. Yeah. That's awesome, man. No doubt. Dude, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor to, to talk to you guys. We'd love to have you on the show again in the future. Um, where can people check you out online? I know you're on everything. What's the best place for people to go? Uh, best place would be YouTube Conservative Twins. I don't think that they're like... Um, not keeping our message from getting out too much over there because Facebook, that used to be a amazing platform for us. We'd put yeah. up a video and it would get millions of views within like a yeah. couple of hours. Now we're lucky to get 300,000 views with six yeah. million subscribers. That, Facebook almost took a, took away that we was like threatening yeah. to be in a public job. Facebook was so popular one time, we was getting close to 20, 20 million views a day. Wow. We yeah. was wow. getting like 100,000 new followers a day and then they started hitting us with white supremacy and fake. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and he said I was homophobic. I was like, man, I'm the least homophobic person on this planet. I love gay people. I ain't got nothing against wrong homosexuals. <laughs> Just I mean, don't try to make me a homosexual. <laughs> yeah, so, push your gen on me and my kids. Yeah, for the record, I'm not racist. I'm not homophobic. I love everybody. Just hate stupid people. Yeah, I <laughs> really hate. Stupid people. I want to bring this up. Socrates. I started reading some philosophy over here. Oh, yeah. And you know, they, they killed this dude because he was, uh, he came out with this idea that not everybody should be allowed to vote. You have to have a certain <laughs> level of intelligence. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they killed that nigga. <laughs> that nigga making a whole lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> because when you see, like, when the left talks about why they vote left, it's like you look at him like, you should literally be locked up in an insane asylum <laughs> with this jacket and everything, the, the the padded walls. It's like yeah, like when they said babies are not humans, they're what they call them, um, parasites. Parasites, <laughs> clumps of cells. They said an yeah. uh, unborn baby is. I was like, man, these people are just. They said it's closer to a parasite than an actual human being. I'm like, they don't even know what a damn parasite is. Yeah, but they killed that dude for that. <laughs> I mean, and, and what he said was true. I mean, yeah. you got to have a certain, be like a the baby to vote. Oh, Let me do some talking. <laughs> like it should be a privilege, like driving. You got to show a level of competency. Right, to drive, right? Yeah. Yep. You should have, be able to show a level of competency to vote because yeah. you are a dangerous person when you're an idiot and you're allowed to vote. Yeah, you mm. could so easily vote away I everybody's right. Back. We're going to take that back. They're going to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all my brother trying to say before you are able to vote, you should know, uh, have a basic grasp of American history, mm. Constitution, yeah, Bill of Rights, your I, rights. You asking way too much, sir. You should have just a basic grasp, and you should take one course in uh, 
critical thinking. <laughs> got to pass it, though. It's a lot, it's a lot to ask for, man. It's a lot to ask for. Yeah. I mean, they're trying, to, they're trying to lower the voting age to, to 15 or 16, aren't they? That's crazy. They do that, <laughs> it, you'll never see another Republican president. <laughs> of course not, man. Of course not. If anything, it should be raised if to 25. You, if, you, if you bring down uh, ages to 13, 14, we're going to have a dictator. They're going to vote away the democracy. And hey, we want a dictator. We want a king. Yep. I want you to take care of me. Yeah. Yep. There we go, man. Hodge Twins, Keith, Kevin, it's been so great to talk to you guys, man. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Right. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. You're welcome, man. Yeah. I'm not scared. Put some respect on my name.